Hi, today is Saturday, March 14th. I'm at home here in my home office and I got done watching the president, vice president, and the coronavirus response team a little bit ago on TV. I was watching with my wife and the kids and we've been talking about all that is going on out there in the world and what we should expect moving forward. So I wanted to come on here and kind of give a brief update on things from my end as it relates to all of you and uh, what we've been up to, kind of where we go from here. And I also wanted to personally invite you to an event that I'll be hosting here in a couple of weeks. So be sure to stick around to the end. So, wow, there is a lot going out there on out there in the world. And my heart absolutely goes out to all of those who are being negatively affected by this coronavirus pandemic. As it relates to the economy and the stock market, the one thing we know is that we just don't know. We just don't know what impact the actions that are being taken to limit the spread of the coronavirus is actually having on economic activity. This is why markets are so volatile. This is why they are so choppy. This is why you can see the market up 5% one day and back down again the very next. It is a lack of information. Markets hate uncertainty. Markets do not like not knowing. They don't like when we just don't know. The big question right now is, is has the market repriced, revalued, recalibrated um, in alignment with the actual effect of the coronavirus, among other things, is having and will have on the overall economy or not? What is this scare actually doing to economic activity? There's an old adage that the stock market goes up a staircase and down out the window. And that's exactly what we recently saw. It is incredible to think how different the markets are from just a few short weeks ago. Now, the speed at which the market has come down these past few weeks is not normal. We've set records. This is the fastest the market has declined 20% from its peak. It took just 24 days to go from a bull market to a bear market. Looking back at the financial crisis, it took 241 days to come down the same amount. What is not abnormal is the amount by which the market has come down. Corrections happen, bear markets happen. We've been through them before and we'll get through this one too. This too shall pass. While I'm sure this recent pullback has been unsettling for you and I'm sympathetic to that, my hope is that looking at it from a wider perspective will help. This is the seventh correction in the past 10 years. You may remember barely over a year ago, in late 2018, the stock market fell just about 20% as the Federal Reserve continued raising interest rates. Now this one may feel worse, but we're really not down that much more than we were then. And of course, who can forget the financial crisis when the market fell over 50%? We got through that. We got through the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. Again, this too shall pass. Speaking of the financial crisis, over the past 10 years, have you ever thought, I wish I had gotten invested when the market was at its low in 2009? I've been asked this numerous times over the past week. If you had invested in the market when it bottomed in 2009, you would have seen your account roughly quadruple in value in just over a decade. And even here today, even here after this recent pullback, it would still be more than three times what you had just 11 years ago. So is now that kind of opportunity? Well, nobody has a crystal ball, including me. And only time will tell. And past performance does not guarantee future returns. But for a longer term investor, for longer term money, the farther down the market goes, historically, the bigger and better the opportunity becomes. The market has moved higher after every single bit of bad news through time. And I have full expectation that this time will be no different. Again, this too shall pass. So what have we been doing? Well, the short answer is we've been really busy. We have a number of different investment strategies and I'd be more than happy to review your accounts with you anytime. But I would like to take a minute and review a couple of our strategies and things that we've been doing. In our Smart Mix strategy, where we invest in Warren Buffett type stocks and thematic ETFs, 
We actually sold the technology heavy thematic funds, which represented about 25% of the equity exposure back on February 25th. At the time, we set a target for where we would start buying back in. And that target was hit on March 12th, just a couple of days ago. So we put half of that money back to work. During the time that we were out of those thematic funds, we avoided about a 20% decline. At the moment, our plan is to invest the other half following the reports of how the virus has actually impacted economic activity. It is around this time that we feel we will retest lows in the market. If you are in smart mix, your allocations, had we never moved out of the market, are in alignment with your unique risk tolerance. The moves that we made recently were intended to add more value. We also have what we call our rules-based strategies. In our rules-based strategies, there are a number of moving parts. I'm going to go through some uh, changes that we made uh, um, recently here. On February 14th, on Valentine's Day, energy stocks started trending downward, and therefore we sold them. At the time of this recording, this move to safety avoided roughly a 34% downside on those stocks. On March 3rd, materials stocks followed suit, entered into a downtrend, so they were sold. On March 4th, half of all large cap dividend stocks were sold. On March 10th, the financial stocks were sold. On March 11th, the industrial stocks were sold. And lastly, just yesterday, on March 13th, all the mid-cap dividend stocks were sold. If you are in our rules-based strategy, you are now roughly two-thirds out of the market, protected from additional decline. So again, we've been busy, and we will stay calm, cool, and collected, diligently sticking to the plan. If you want to review your plan, your allocations, your strategies, or you just want to discuss, please don't hesitate to reach out. Historically, now would be a really good time to review particularly how to be positioned when the market starts to rise again. Repositioning does not happen overnight, so it would be good to discuss sooner rather than later. Remember, you can schedule an appointment on our website anytime at www dot invest with ccg dot com. So where do we go from here? What is going to happen in the markets? Well, the shorter the time period that you're looking at, the less likely that anyone will be right. The longer that we look out, the more confidence we can have in the outcome. So again, we are still in this period of time here where we just don't know. Remember, we just don't have information right now. The market has come down on fear, mostly fear of the unknown. And as new information is released, the market will react. And as it reacts, it will mean more ups and downs. So be ready for more volatility. In the short term, the virus is not contained yet. Containment efforts are growing and growing fast, but reports of cases here in the US are increasing while there are reports out of China that the numbers of cases are, de are decreasing, are declining. China is getting back to work, factories are opening, they're getting back to normal. Apple just reopened 90% of its stores over there. Things are improving. Now, this is especially true as the reports are going to hit closer to home. The coronavirus is here in the U.S., and at last count, we have 21 cases here in Minnesota. Some schools have closed. Our kids' spring break just got extended to two weeks. Sports events have closed. The U of M is limiting classes to online only, and more. Now, the closer to home the reports are, the more nerve-wracking it will probably feel. And it's okay to be nervous, but hopefully being ready for it will help you get through it. Ultimately, the headlines are going to get worse. Both the headlines about the spread of the virus, but also the economic and market headlines. We can also expect more and more reports of economic aid, whether it be tax cuts, rate cuts, interest-free loans, and a whole host of other things coming out to help support people, small businesses, and the economy in general, really just to get through this slowdown in activity. The expectation here is that these efforts will be received positively by the markets. Just yesterday, the president declared a state of emergency, releasing $50 billion worth of assistance. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said that we're in just the second inning of assistance and that the administration is committed to doing whatever it takes to support the economy. 
He mentioned things like support for small businesses to prevent layoffs, ensuring paid sick leave and payroll tax credits. Congress already approved $8.3 billion in emergency spending and have now also passed a coronavirus relief bill. Again, it is all these targeted types of support that we've been expecting and that we expect more of as time goes on. Now, looking out a little bit further in the intermediate term over the next month or two, we'll be getting more and more information about economic activity and what effect this virus is actually having on our economy. Unfortunately, we don't believe the news will be great and that we could easily take back any gains that we see in the markets between now and then. Remember, I do not have a crystal ball. Nobody does. So please don't panic on this. The market has already come down a lot. And the question is whether it has come down the right amount. In other words, how close is the market pricing the actual effect the virus has had on economic activity? The hope is that it has come down too much, as is often the case when driven by fear. Looking back from further out from now, the market will find a bottom. Maybe it's already happened, maybe it's yet to come. The selling will stop, the declines won't be as bad, and the bad news will be replaced with better news. The virus will be on the decline, people will be returning to work, schools will be reopening, and we'll get back to life as usual. The hardest part about this is that historically, the stock market bottoms before the headlines do. What this means is that the right time to call the bottom, the right time to be getting back into the market, is when it still feels scary to do so. Whether this was last week, is in the next few weeks, or months from now, only time will tell. But again, this too shall pass. I am paying very close attention and I want to provide as much clarity into what is happening, what is going on, what we are doing, and everything else as possible. In that effort, I want to personally invite you to an additional communication that I'm working on. So save the date, mark your calendar. On April 7th at 10 a.m. Central Time, I'll be hosting an online presentation to give you an update on where things are at in the markets and the economy, as well as an outlook. At that time, I'll be joined by Jeff Thompson and John Fourlines of W.E. Donahue. Together, they oversee and manage more than $2 billion in client assets. And Jeff is the real brains behind the decisions to move in and out of the market in our rules-based strategies. For the sake of everyone's health, like I said, this event will be online only. So watch your email for additional communication. When it's time to register for the event, you'll have an opportunity to submit questions. So be sure to take advantage of that. If you submit questions ahead of time, it makes it a lot easier to get answers for you. If you'd like to email me your questions, please don't hesitate to do it that way as well. And even if you can't make it at that time, be sure to register anyway, and we'll send you the recording. With that, I'm gonna go get back to my family time. You probably heard them in the background. But remember, in this time of uncertainty, where we just don't know what is to come, do not be afraid. This too, shall pass. Hey, this is Eric again. I want to thank you for taking a few minutes with me here today. Did you find value in today's message? If so, please help me help others and share it. Want more ideas for making the most of your financial future? There are a lot of ways and I'd love to help. Be sure to subscribe here and then go visit me online at www.erichagan.pro. I hope to see you around.